No. We don't often try something completely new. Yeah, but it should be. It's a 20 second lag. Yeah. It's a 7 second lag. Hopefully you're not clicking on the uh, the uh, link to Ketchak where I'm stealing all of the viewers. No, I meant Olivia since she was saying not yet. All right, so now that, now that we're streaming, we can actually do our our uh, show recap here. Uh, and we're going to do the, the format we discussed, or I sent out, right, where we talk about group activities and then um, uh, individual, like one individual activity, right? All right, so um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Title is MFLA Recap. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it's using the old uh it's a GP slash MF tradition, which is the one we used for the old uh the old one. Uh Okay. Um Right, so I guess we'll do the, the sync now, which uh viewers are gonna really appreciate because it's uh super technical. I've got my little notepad here. I don't know what time it is on the audio track, so let's see what the audio track says. Oh, that's glorious. Okay, so at 15.30 we do the sync. So, are you folks ready? I'll be one, Shivam's two, and Olivia's three. One. 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 Nice. Now our audio is all synced. And uh, we'll do... Yeah, but this is like a treat, I guess. So, yeah, this is a test. So, uh, yes. And we make a lot of sausage here. Sometimes it's soy riso. Oh, just staring at you? <laughs> it, it's amazing. It's uh, dead... I have. Oh, look at that. Boy, that fish cast MTG. That's one smart cookie. Let's see. No, not studio mode. Go to settings. Where is that fish cast MTG? And how, by the way, are you reading fish cast MTGs? Are you in like some sort of Twitch chat or something? Crazy. <laughs> Audio, desktop audio device default. Let's see. Yeah. Speakers, headphones. Oh, wait, we don't want that. We want speaker. Mic auxiliary audio device default. The mic is there. Oh lord. Yeah. And and what do you do? <clears throat> 
Uh, so, so I, I go, go audio, audio input, input capture here, and the devi device is... Uh... Oh, it's, it's going to be the, the microphone, microphone, right? No. no. Let's try that. Well, well where, where the, the hell, hell is Fishcast? Fish I'm, not, I'm not, in, not in the chat. Got it. Got it. Uh, so, so he, he should, should be hearing, hearing it in about three, three or four, four seconds. seconds. Let's, Let's see if he can hear you. Hey, hey Fishcast, fish so, so let, let, us, let, let us, us know, know if you can hear them. them. I'm, I'm supposing, supposing that, that you can't. can't. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what gave, gave you that, that idea? idea? Is that, Is that Charles? Charles? Why, Why can't, can't I see this? this? I, I had I had the, the dashboard, dashboard, so let me. No Overwatch. Yeah. yeah, and of, and of course, course I, have I have the audio, audio off down there, so here I am, welcome to, chit to, wit to Twitch chat, goodness gracious. Yeah, there's yeah, about a 30 second delay, I read, I read that from Cali, Cali Film, Film Girl. Girl. Thank, Thank you for, for helping us, everybody. This, this is, is actually wonderful, wonderful that you're that helping, helping, because we would, we would have recorded the entire episode, and Phil is channeling his intergalactic space beam voice with that echo. Hmm. All right, All right, so, so yeah, yeah really, really, really appreciate, appreciate your patience. patience. So, so how, how do we do the input, input audio input, input capture? capture? So when so you're, you're, when you're stream stream late with somebody, somebody over, how, how do you do, you do it? it? Careful what, For you, what you share, share because we, we are live. live. Who, me? me? Oy Oy vey. Vey. When you, when you say, say you, you have it, it what, did what did you, you click, click on, on there? there? Yep. Yep. Oh. oh. Say, say something. something. Oh, see, well, see, it's, it's not, not capturing, capturing anything. anything. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's turned, turned out, up, but it's not capturing anything. anything. So and so you have it in, you're you're in the mixer, mixer on desktop audio, audio right? right? All right, let's, let's see what properties. Let's, let's try, try this. this. Now, now say, say something. something. Hi, hi, hi. I bet I you that goes through. through. Let's, let's quick go, go to Twitch, Twitch chat and see, see what they say. I'm looking at Twitch chat. Yeah, Twitch, what do we got? Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, uh, everyone is there. there. All right. Yay! Well, well thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Especially, Especially you, Cody. Cody. I mean, I mean fish, fish cast, cast MTG. MTG. We're using, using Cody. Fash kissed. Fash, fash, I don't, I don't think, think it's fash, fash kissed. kissed. Probably should be. I'm I don't think. think what do you what mean, mean I still have echo? echo. Ha! <laughs> Sweet <laughs> jumping <laughs> Jesus. Yes, I bet two things are trying to pick you up. Mike, Mike looks at her. Phil Echo. Wait. Wait. Flecko. Okay, okay, that's, that's good. good. Oh, oh, look, look at, at that. that. Echo Phil, Echo What is this? this? Huh. Oh, the, the stupid... stupid... Mm. <laughs> Let's turn that whammer jammer down. Uh, I bet you she says the Echo is gone now. No, we can't use... There, there see? You there you go. Okay, so uh, this is very interesting. Um, what... What OBS was doing there was picking up the audio from the laptop microphone, as well as this microphone, the Rode. Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course it's giving me the echo. I mean, I could have I could have done some you know freestyle and sounded like Tupac. Uh, no. What? Why not? No, because Tupac used to record his tracks almost identically. 
Magic. How did that work? <laughs> <laughs> Olivia and Shivam are just chilling, and Phil looks like he's stuck in a pantry. Yeah. This not is not inaccurate. Not, not inaccurate. Not inaccurate at all, except for the lack of food. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, we're in my uh, my recording booth. I, I, I call it a recording booth, but it's actually, yeah, we are. I'm in my recording booth, which is a um, walk-in closet that we converted into a, a place with anti-noise stuff. Olivia, your volume is a bit low, says Callie Film Girl, who is, by the way... Thank you, Callie. ...one of our editors. That's Vanessa. Oh, I mean, I have Callie no Film idea. Girl. Figure it out because it's already at maximum on Discord. Hmm. Callie's it better because I moved the mic closer to me. That might help. Look at Shivam. He's practically resting his face on his microphone. Shivam hey, is about helped. to fall asleep. Oh. I have that. I'm gonna go close my door though, so there's no trees. Oh yeah. So one of the things is, um, whilst we are doing the episodes. Yeah, it will be in our best interest to not pay attention to the chat because right. that will make for really bad audio. Yes, at yes. some point we switch to the chat. I I imagine in order to like deliberately we can, talk about, we can talk to the chat before and after. Yeah, well at... maybe not before. I recommend before we should have like a. Few Let me explain. So uh, at some point we will switch to Twitch chat. I think if, when we're doing these streams, just so that we can do the audience participation and involve them, so that we can. Uh, uh, create that you know uh, a better experience people enjoy it more when they're involved yes and not before or after like you know what i mean right yeah. and uh along those lines um if you give me the uh access to the channel as well yeah then i can fire up just the version of it that has just shows the chat off the dashboard so that i don't get the double lag of seeing the video of the live channel as well as the chat bit but we can we can do that offline later i haven't even figured out how to do that because i'm looking at the laggy version with the chat next to it um <laughs> okay so that's uh that's a good lesson let's uh <laughs> let me pull up my account and i'll show you where you can go <laughs> Should we do the intro again? Oh, we're going to do the intro again. Just give it oh, a second. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that intro again. Okay, so here's the thing. If you're in the dashboard. Uh-huh. Under live. Yeah. There should be a block there. The stream information, a video preview, and a chat. Mm hmm And that will let you see the chat, and it'll let you see a video preview that if you mute, it won't give you any problems. Dashboard. Hmm. So if you click on your name in the top corner there, yeah. like for me it says Electrotel. Oh yeah, and then um, it's uh, dashboard. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And this way you can name the the stream. Yeah, and it won't let probably be like, it won't let you rename the stream that's, that's it won't let you rename the stream that's in progress already. Oh uh, no, you can do that. Oh, it refused me before. Let's try it. Cause I've definitely done that while streaming, so like All right, let's see. I'm going to change it. How do you change it? Update information. Pow! There is a way to do share it with Shivam, but I don't think you can both be in the account. Right. We're not talking about that. Yeah, All right, I guess fine. maybe we were talking about that. but Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just talking more in terms of the... I'm trying to show you the dashboard. Mm -hmm. The dashboard is hell useful. Yes. I've gotten a total of 154 views lifetime. Wow. Which is pretty impressive for the fact that I've streamed thrice. We have seven viewers. That means the three of us. Have... Oh, down to oh, six. Good. I have 11 streams, but I have like 1,100 users. Yeah, but you actually stream regularly. I, I stream without telling I anybody stream that I'm streaming. I've streamed 11 times. I've... Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. We changed it. It's all. It's now Commander and First Stream. A test. Affinity artifacts. I'm learning stuff too. How about that? And then okay. under the category, if you click there, oh, you can right. switch it to uh, Magic the Gathering or whatever it is you want. I don't know. You can stream it under Just Chatting. You can I, stream it under. I like travel. Chatting. I like traveling outdoors. 
<laughs> you could stream it under, I don't know, um, Onimusha or your favorite, I don't know, Unreal Tournament 98, <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Um, that Should does... Do do stream it tournament. Oh, I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivan Putt. And I am your guest host, Olivia <laughs> Gilbert Hicks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're doing. And we are Commander in. Yeah, are it's we? brand new. Yeah, are we really? Are um, we? So now audio listeners will really hear the music. Um, everybody else has to hear Olivia and Shivam do the music. Commander in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll end up keeping that. That's uh, believe it or not, that's twenty eight minutes or so into the audio stream, the audio recording, and like an hour into us uh, getting to this point. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, all right, so uh, <laughs> sorry. See, I end up laughing anyway. Literally every time. Every every time, even even like this. So. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. And the four of you watching right now, that's awesome. Thank you for the help. You've been a big help. Um, we, we like to put a spotlight on community issues and Shivam. And uh, because he has a, a big bright light off to his right there. And yeah, Olivia, you were really low just then. Really? Yeah. That was loud. Do you have a rabbit? Was that your neighbor? Well, everybody, Olivia is experiencing something. It's an event. It's a happening, if you will. I just hope I'm not going to die. Yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> At least uh, not tonight. I mean, I know it's coming, but still. Yeah, it's coming. It comes for everyone. Um, but we never, ever talk about three banned topics. And I'm, I can't even do it. <laughs> Religion, politics, and Hearthstone. I mean, More right you know, here. slanty face emoji. What do you want? Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> I mean, not certainly not on the show. Okay, maybe so certainly not where you can see. Yeah, maybe before <laughs> we turn the cameras on. Not where you can see. Find him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally three seconds of my Twitter feed will tell you all the religion, politics, and Hearthstone that you ever needed to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, someone in Twitch chat <laughs> just asked how they can support the show. And uh, I'm glad you asked their person in Twitch chat because uh, what we what we recommend is that people refer their friends by sending the link to the show. Goodness gracious, if this is not a, a wonderful show that should be shared with everybody, everything okay over there? <laughs> Aces. Aces. Uh, anyway, so send the link to the show because this is a wonderful show. Um, you can also go to YouTube, and this is actually on YouTube. So if you're watching us and you're not on Twitch, then you're already there. Hit that bell. Smash that bell. What do they say? Smash that bell. I'm pretty sure they don't. Crush it. No, they do. People say it. I say crush it, but I don't say that to the bell. Yep, yep. You don't say that to the bell? What do you say on your stream? I don't. Hmm. If I'm not going to tell anybody that's already watching to subscribe because they already have. Oh, we're, we're not above I'm that. really bad at doing this. Don't mind really bad you're better than we are go down to that bell right now <laughs> click on that bell gently caress that bell look at that bell does it bring you joy does that bell fill you with happiness what whatever Why don't you reciprocate to that bell yeah share some of that happiness back that bell wants to Love give you it. happiness click it. make that bell ring. is it hot is in this here even after hours yeah what, really what's happening? look dude this spotlight is making me loopy okay does... what do you want Anyone mind if I take my shirt? No, never mind. Um, I do. No, literally everybody yeah, does. Everyone does. Literally everybody does. Everybody. Um, another way, I'm glad the Twitch stream reminded us just now, the Twitch chat reminded us, another way to support us is if you really want to go that extra mile, you can donate a buck a show or whatever you want. Some people are a little crazy and uh, donate more than a buck a show. And uh, you can do that at commanderandmtg.com slash donations or patreon.com slash commanderandmtg. Or even go to GoFundMe, search for Commander at MTG Podcast, and look for our logo, our C logo, because it's not the one with Sean Watson, former co-host, smiling face. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, astute viewers and perhaps listeners have heard that Olivia 
Gobert Hicks is on the show tonight. And uh, she's a guest host I because... Mean, it's hard to miss given that she's literally smashed between us. Yep, she's smashed between us. It's uh, She's smack dab in the center of the video stream, which is off to my right, which is why I look down there. And uh, uh, we were all together at uh, Magic Fest Los Angeles, and so we're here to bring you a recap of um, Magic Fest Los Angeles. I guess you could say we have a wonderful show lined up for you. Um, so... <laughs> Olivia, why don't you... There's like three people who don't know who you are at this point. Mm-hmm. Fair. Would you uh, be willing to introduce yourself and tell our listeners uh, all about you? Sure. A TLDR about me. My... I am a commander in Thuth, and I also dress up like the people on the cards sometimes. Sometimes. And you changed yeah. camera angles, but you had your Atraxa costume in the back yeah. there, right? Yeah, that's awesome. We can. We have a good. There she is. Hi, Traxa. Dude, you guys should have seen her taste from crazy. LA. It was insanely good. Yeah. Oh, insanely good. I'm really happy with Taysa. Yeah. Very well. Someday, and perhaps uh, uh, Fishcast MTG. MTG Fishcast? Well, I'd have to look. Fist, I'm not... I don't want to fist your cash. Fish, Fishcast MTG will have to advise us on how to include uh, pictures. Because we have plenty of pictures of um, of Olivia uh, uh, in her cosplay. God, I'm just drawing a blank here. I'm trying not to be distracted by several things, including what we're saying. Yeah, literally, that's why I shut the Twitch window down. Because I'm like, hey guys, that was cool, but literally we need to do a show. Yeah, I can't see it anymore. It's off my right. Um, so we do have a wonder... Sorry? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, your volume is a little bit low still something's going on i'll just i'll just talk right here that's actually much yeah. better <laughs> and you, it. it won't hurt your neck at all to do that no not one bit yeah. i'll just now what you could do is uh turn the uh the input up on your windows controller ah okay i'll do that um yeah uh so tonight <laughs> today this episode we're going to talk about um, Magic Fest Los Angeles. And we're going to do it largely for memory because we can't afford to look at anything else. At least we'd be distracted. Um, and uh, viewers and listeners, I suppose uh, it's fair to say we're going to go through somewhat chronologically. Um, we're going to talk about group events and, of course, anything individual that stood out from the, that day. For example, Thursday... <laughs> Thursday started somewhat early with, uh, uh, we, I guess we could pick it up with the uh, group caravan down from uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, man. that So Thursday I mean, yeah. has to be one of the longest days I've had since I was a youth, uh, having you know spent much of my childhood driving up and down the East Coast with my parents, and also when we were nerds in the 20s driving to like cons or whatever. But like, Olivia had a bit of a trek getting from Reno to uh, Cali, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> All of the freeways into California. Because it snowed a lot. So the night before, I want to say about 14 hours before my flight, I had to buy a ticket to Oakland. <laughs> and I had to buy an early flight to Oakland because some of them were actually uh, had layovers in LAX. And I was this close to being like, hey, guys, see you here. Have fun care of <laughs> Yes, yeah, I, had, I had a feeling that wouldn't go over so well, especially because I kind of like organized that. So <laughs> I went straight into Oakland and got picked up for the. It would have been a little line, awkward so. if all of us who didn't know each other otherwise were in a car together. Yeah, that's uh, that would have been kind of strange. So been fine. I mean, I only know good people. It's cool. You guys would have been. Well, the really thing that made great. me laugh was that one of your uh, options to fly out here was to go from Reno to Los Angeles and then back up to Oakland. Which would have been fantastic to just I turn know. around and drive another nine hours down. Like, just kidding. I was literally just here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that, yeah. that would have been painful. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Olivia and uh, our friend Andrew, who is a heavy metal drummer and also our Sherpa for the weekend, mm-hmm. uh, basically hopped in this incredibly large uh, Chevy, came to my house, ate half a loaf of sourdough bread, and then we were on our way. Yeah, um, did. Yeah, like I had half a loaf of bread left over from the last experiment of bread I'd made. And I was like, here, have some bread while I pack my decks. And uh, they literally ate the whole thing. And I was like, great. That means I don't need to worry about having to keep it around. 
Uh, it was amazing. And, and so we, we started sweet sandwiches. Salad. Oh yeah, we got sandwiches and we like you know stocked up on Seven Eleven foods and stuff, and then we're on our way yeah. south. And it was right at the time that uh, Magic was doing the um, Modern Horizons, uh, the Modern Horizons uh, Twitch stream. Oh yeah, they, so yeah. We were like a third of the way towards Fresno when we were watching that on like our. I'm sure our data plans are going to be blown out. But we were sitting well, there in the so car fun. watching this thing as they're like, "Look, here comes Sarah and Cabal therapist and blah blah blah." Wait, you don't pay for your data by a bit, do you? No, but I have like some like megabit cap or something on my thing. I don't you have do? like I got, the, I got the Google Fi, so I only pay for the data I use. Used to have a, like unlimited and unlimited, but it, I actually use Wi Fi a lot more than well, I thought. Well, look at you, fancy I shaved like 70 bucks off my bill. It was amazing. Hmm. I, um, should, I should look into that. But normally I don't normally bust my data, so it doesn't matter. But uh, no, it was cool. We were like sitting there and just chatting the whole way down, talking about. I don't know, talked politics about... in the magic community. And we talked about <laughs> hella lore, too. Yeah, That's lots weird. of lore stuff, lots of just... Uh... God, we had some ridiculously... Like, for all the fact that it's, like, the first time me and Olivia have spent more than 10 minutes together in a place, yeah. those conversations got pretty ridiculous pretty quick. Um, and then we listened to heavy metal music. Yeah. Like, a, more heavy metal music wow. than I've listened to since I was, like, 22, which was pretty great. It felt like going home again. <laughs> but it was like, wow, that's a lot of double bass all over the place all the time <laughs> so uh we ended up heading down to fresno to pick up uh Kensati and uh old man ursa two other cosplayers who are married and live down there and Kensati was dressing up as uh this what is that the justice seraph, seraph of one the seraph yeah seraph of the scales the mythic uh from the orzov mythic she had this amazing set of like handcrafted scales and this wings and this armor and her husband was dressing up like Urza with this really cool looking Urza get up. And we had to uh, Tetris up the car to get ready to head down. And it was amazing. It was just super cool to be in like a caravan full of magic nerds and talk about magic. And now I don't know how many cons you've been to, Phil. I'm going to guess it's been like 12 billion. A lot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to guess you've been going to cons as long as I have been alive or maybe at least as long as I've been going to cons. But one of the things about it is like when you're in a car with a bunch of strangers and nerds and stuff, and you know that everybody's here for like D&D &D, or here for like magic or here for whatever that specific niche you're into. And you can sit and just start talking about like, you know, eighth level down stuff and not just like surface level. Oh, you know, I played this card game, blah, blah. No, we're like, oh my God, can you believe the mana cost on that stupid thing? It's like too, too high. It should be a 2.5. I mean, it's like when you can jump right into deep level nerd conversation, you feel real good. It's like, oh my God, I feel like my community's here. I am back home. I'm with my people. Right? I'm like seen. You can open I'm up the map good. and be like, look at Terrassier. It's right here. And we can be like, oh my God, lore, lore, lore. And uh, Sarah, the Sarah costume came out. It was amazing. So what was that, Olivia? I said, oh, it's like you're, you feel seen, you're understood. Yeah. yeah. With exactly. People. It's just like, oh, everything makes sense. I don't have to like, explain myself or hold back. It's like they got it. And, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling when yeah. you don't have to, you know, like temper yourself and you can be passionate. You can be excited and everybody else there shares it instead of it being yeah. like. And you don't need I, to explain. I don't, I can't, it's not that not like people get, you know, mean about it because usually they don't. It's just like, I just don't understand. So I can't, you know, do the, the high pitched dolphin clicking with you. But when you're with, can. yeah and it's like these people are on your level so much that you don't have to sit there and like you don't need to do the introductory work right right like we can just dive right into can you believe that sarah sanctum was floating behind sarah on the picture of the planet water right can you believe that card is like almost yeah right you know, like oh my god her negative makes a sarah it's a, like a sarah angel her her um ultimate is uh worship her number one yeah. is sarah aviary from homelands like, I love that. I, I mean, so then we made it down like 30 million hours later. Well, so, so while they're, they're, they were driving listeners, we ended up, um, I had organized this uh, event uh, at uh, my, my, my workplace, which is also my, um, my current meta. And um, we amazing. got, we had um, Dana and Adam Fisher there. And of course we have, we uh, tweeted a picture of that. Um, we also had, um, 
Sean Tavares from the Commander's Brew came. Uh, Andy Bentley of uh, this parish's fame, as it were, uh, was there. Um, and, um, oh, and of course, Adam Hicks, plus a bunch of other people from my workplace. And it was a blast. We were having a, a great time. And... Um, the uh the we had we had reservations we had space all set aside and um uh for these fine folks who were coming down from uh making the the full like eight hour drive and uh they got there a little too late though because i didn't realize there was a visitor policy neither did anyone from uh my workplace understand that there was a visitor policy uh and we tried for an hour to get them in once they actually arrived and dana was out so happy she ran out there to say hi and ultimately we couldn't get them in and uh, so they they weren't able to join, but I went back in and we ended up playing until midnight, twelve thirty or so. Um, and then, uh, but once you're in, the the security dude wasn't about to go upstairs. They are a guy. Yeah, but yeah, it was really. I mean, it was cool to see Dana again because like she ran out and gave us all hugs, and I'm like, oh, Thanks. I see. That's so wonderful. And she's like, I she even I saw you on the PPR. It was so much fun, and I was like, that's well, I. I'm done. You I feel validated. Yeah. Like yep. the great magic celebrity has now seen me. Life is good. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. And uh, I got to do squats while holding Dana on my back. I have video of that. X. Ex- yes. Ex- How have you not sent that to me? Oh, uh, I have dozens of images <laughs> on He's my like, phone. I've from, been watching you for days. From just Saturday <laughs> and uh, from just Thursday, <laughs> rather. And uh, yeah, There's I have so to many take. Better ways to phrase that sentence. Shivam or me? You. Well, I didn't say anything. I have dozens of <laughs> things on my on my phone from just Thursday alone, and I haven't had time to uh, compile it. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't make it all stalkery like Shivam did, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, then then Friday. Um, uh, so, uh, go. Um, I'm sorry. I was still like on Thursday time because uh, Thursday we went back to the cosplayer cabin where I ended up crashing because of just, you know, sugar crash. And that night we ended up like, we're like, well, we're all here. and We got nothing else to do. Let's play some Commander because what else are you going to do, right? And I was like, hey, who wants to play Commander? Plane Chase. Because Plane Chase is the best way to play Commander. And so we pulled you, out our deck. No, stop it. You said, do you, who wants to play Commander? And I asked Ron Chase. Fair. But I had the Plane Chase deck already in my bag. So I was like, that's true. Both it's right here. Let's do it. Chase. And we got a goat plane. I forget what it is. It's like Gold Meadow or something like that. I think so, yeah. And where you play a land and you get three zero one one goats. It's and so many goats. if you roll the chaos die, you get another goat. So we were stuck on this plane for hours, it felt like. To the end, <laughs> we all had like 60-something goats on the table. We all, there were a lot of goats on the and table. And because I was playing like the stock goats. cat deck, the uh, the cat commander that had come out last year or whatever. Arabo, yeah. Yeah, Arabo. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to equip my goats because they're just sitting here. So I had my goats with a sword and shield or running out there, just goading. And then Kinsadi played, who was playing Prosh. So. Hey, let Olivia tell the story. Why? Fair point. He was there. Well, so was... Needed, I just needed to correct the record that I was the one that was like, does someone have plane chase? Because there's five of us and we're playing Commander Robbie. Plane chase. Right, th- right there. He was, he Did was she doing cut a wonderful there? job with the story. No, that was right. I heard her. Um, yeah, I'm I'm losing her signal uh, for oh, a, a split bit. second every couple of seconds. And I just asked uh, chat if that happens. And, and oh, Charles is spotting it, yeah. So, yeah, there's something internet, happening. With... Internet but is your, your Audacity is still recording it, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Audacity is recording. Right. I'm just saying there's something to note yeah. for when we are doing this uh, as a live stream. Um, Fair. Okay. And uh, so can, but uh, can you finish the story? Um, well, I saw Ken, I, I saw Ken Sadi playing Prosh and I kind of knew it was time to give up the goat. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You asked for it, Phil. This is, you, you brought it upon yourself. I did. It was I did. Bad um, <laughs> so what was it that she ended up doing? Like, I don't she remember. She played Perf. Was perfectly continue, perfectly ah! continued. It was Perforos, that's right. She played Perforos, then played a handful played of lands, and then Prosh just to death. That's what you do. It was, 
There was a lot of goats. We we definitely it was it, she put no not perforos it was impact tremors because it felt what like it there was, was it was yeah, impact. impact tremors and it felt like there was like a goat just stampede. Goat a herd of goats. Yep, goat Mageddon. Yeah, goat Mageddon. That's funny. Because she knocked she knocked me out at the next night's event with the prosh deck too. Like right as I was about to just pop off with Brea with uh, poison tip archer. So just as you were about to uh, win the game by playing a degenerate deck, she won the game by playing a degenerate deck. Not exactly. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she her deck did exactly what it said it's going to do. Yeah, and it wasn't like some food chain like garbage combo. It was literally... Because I'm playing a bunch right. of goats and you're going to die. <laughs> this is the plane we're on. So. Right. It was fun. As, okay, so it was great. It was an amazing game. So, Listeners, I got to tell you, the plane chase commander is got to be now my favorite way to play the game. Like I cannot husband. imagine a better way to play than plane chase commander. Plane chase commander is amazing because you get the added bonus of your finely tuned deck may not work like it's supposed to anymore. Which, when you're playing against someone that always does the same comp, always running, whatever, whatever makes it all the better but it's a completely new way of having to deal with what you've built both in how you interact with where you are and how do you interact with other players and it's is the greatest i know i say commander and commander is the best which it is when you add plane chase it is like next level and it's even better yeah. when you have plane chase and monarch I've, plane chase and monarch is monarch, it's crazy huh? town uh i i've played i've played a, a a large chunk and i think i'm in the um like i i enjoy an occasional plane chase game but i do not enjoy when some external factors are messing with my deck like that i'm a but chaos that, see, that's why it's good is because everyone's like no my deck it's already so good it's supposed to work this way it's like we'll go to hell with that like that's no fun <laughs> yeah it's like we're gonna make it so nobody's deck works like it's supposed congratulations to we're we on sulfuric see... vortex world Right, and now we get to see like how good our brains are at playing Magic instead of like, the <laughs> autopilot. I see this picture; it means this happened. Oh yeah, uh, autopilot. <laughs> that's that's the way I play my decks. It's autopilot. No, but it just I. I'm just saying you know I'll, your decks really well. Like that's what it is. Is like you know. Sometimes I feel you when you're when you're getting stymied in a game, your face becomes the most adorably irritated. Yeah, you're just you're like it crunches up a bit, and you're just like. I could see like the little puffs of smoke and just like Yeah. Yeah. You see all this the neurons misfiring the right? <laughs> yeah. But it's awesome. Like me as being a chaos goblin, rolling the dice and having it land somewhere else and being like, ah, uh, now you flip your deck upside down and play with the bottom card instead of the top. And I'm like, I I, I guess. Let's figure out what happens. I don't know. I guess because my decks are so linear normally that having that extra level of BS just uh, helps me keep it fresh. Mm, keep <laughs> it fresh. It's funny, just uh, sometimes the way the, the plane interacts with the deck, you actually see things that you've never seen before. And you get to like, I, I mean, I've stumbled across combos I didn't know I've had before in plane chase just because the way the plane's interacting with them, but then you get to be like, oh, I'd never considered I can do X, Y, and Z with a few things. So here I am. And now I've seen a new facet of my deck. Yeah. Cool. So Friday morning. <laughs> now you made it to the hall before um, uh, before we did, because um, I had to pick up uh, Ryan and Zach from the Brothers War podcast, right. and um, their uh, their airplane was they they were on the tarmac just before they were supposed to, but then they ended up um, uh, sitting on the tarmac in the airplane for an extra hour because that's always fun. They on United? No, they were on uh, something else. Uh, oh, okay. And but it wasn't it wasn't United, and no one got beat up. So, um, but did you, what time did you make it to the the hall? I think we got in around ten. You do mm -hmm. anything? Uh, you it, it, you do anything individually I mean, we, fun? I, we did the like all those cosplayers did the check in and like the inaugural pictures of the first time. So. Um, uh, one of the artists is always a dear to cosplayers. RK Post lets us keep all of our stuff at his booth because he's rad and always has the space. Yeah. So uh, we dropped a bunch of our stuff off there and said hi to him. And then 
uh, what did we do right off the bat? I genuinely think like it was walking around doing pictures. It's all. Oh, I mean, we were looking honestly. for space to play. Like, yeah, we were looking for space to play. We ended up. No, we didn't use Galaxy Brain thing until Saturday of like using our tickets. I think we ended up in the our... event center in the front of the hall where the tournament would have been taking place because the tournament right. didn't start until Saturday. That's what it was. Because I went around to buy more pieces for my Enchanter deck that I was working on literally the entire weekend. And uh, and then I went and wandered off and ended up shivering around, as Phil likes to say, where I was just like, oh, okay, so here's what happened. I was looking through a box of bulk rares, like, like a little raccoon perched over this pile of junky cards going like you know your fingers are over and it's like you've got a broken chicken wing in your mouth and you're just like rattling around the trash and Sounds suddenly like day, somebody honestly. grabbed my shoulder and <laughs> shakes it and i was just sitting there like startled and i turned my head and i'm like i felt like i was doing something illegal or illicit right like i had this kind of deer in headlights stare and this dude grabs my hands like i'm i'm so honored to meet you and i'm like Actually, you tried to kill me, but hey, what's up? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Who are you? That's great. I appreciate it. You know, I was just like, but I felt like I was under arrest for digging through garbage comments or something. It was amazing. But yeah, actually, that first day, I ended up just wandering around. I met a lot of fans, and it was a lot of, it was just cool to see everybody just kind of like getting into the groove of the con. Yeah. And then uh, while you were in waiting in airport hell, me, Olivia, and uh, Tappy Toes went off to lunch with... Um, Alex Kessler of Master the Modern. We went to meet him at near his office, apparently, mm -hmm. which is like 40 minutes away from the con hall. And I have no sense of Los Angeles direction. I was just like, eh, the yonder. It's, it's 40 minutes and like two and a half miles. Yeah, right. <laughs> like it looked really close on the map, well, but I like forgot that there's people in LA. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's 14 miles from the convention center. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I later learned that your workplace is actually really close to there. I didn't yep. know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. But we ended up going to this place called Killer Ramen, which was a delight. It was one of the best vegetarian ramen I've ever had in my life. I'm a big fan of ramen. That was really and good. It was the three of us, as well as uh, Kessler, Craig Blanchett, the infected guy, and uh, their friend Michael. And uh, we sat and we just talked about food and toys because I'm really curious about how a dude ends up having a living making toys, and I thought that was really cool. And then he took us on a tour of his office and gave me a bunch of toys for my son which was uh, also really cool. And then we wandered back to the hall and uh, it was amazing because that's when I saw you sitting there with uh, Andy Bentley and then the commander, uh, the brew guys were there. Uh, it felt like there was that whole commander aisle we had going on in the far north, like the far northwest of the con hall. Yeah, we're really was, close like, to the feature table. Yeah. yeah. Like it was all of us. It was like the um, Brothers War. It was the commander's brew. Josh was there. Uh, prof was there. DJ and, too from Jumbo Commander. Yep. Yeah, and it was just like, wow, this is the biggest gathering of Commander content creators maybe in history. Well, no. Just hanging out. <laughs> huh? No, Mister Hyperbole, but that's close. It okay. Well, I, I did preface with maybe. <laughs> Uh, no, that was probably GP Vegas. Yeah, probably and so while we were playing, um, uh, someone, uh, well, another listener came up to us, uh, Lionel. He's a new uh, Lionel, Lionel, I suppose. I shouldn't pronounce it that way, but he's um, uh, he's a new listener. And uh, what is it? Yeah, he came up to us. We were playing the only, like, the only game I actually managed to play on Friday. Um, and it was with um, Shivam and Ryan, me. He came up. Lionel introduced himself, said hi. It was really nice to see him. And... Um, uh, then right after that, we had to, well, I had to go and, um, I managed to pull Shivam and Ryan and Zach and we went to, uh, the dragon and meeple, which is where we had our, uh, organized the commander event. Um, that's a simple name for it. Just the commander event. <clears throat> and, and can I you know, just pause for, hmm? I said it works for a name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Turns out. Cause guess and, what we uh, did there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I mean. We uh we pulled up to the Dragon and Meeple and um like uh it, it's this really nice uh, facade on the building and you walk in and it's this big gaming area with lots of picnic style benches um or, or tables at least and individual chairs of course and 
uh, it has a maximum capacity of uh, 60 people in that right there. And we ended up putting 57 in. And, and people who are on the Twitch stream or know about our Twitch stream or are watching us on YouTube right now can go back in time just a little bit and can see all of the awesome videos we recorded there. And can I just say, Phil, uh, it was amazing. It, it was absolutely it was. amazing. And you did such a good job putting uh, this together. No, it, but... Like, it was all for the community. I don't. I don't care what I did about that. It's. It's just. Yeah, but but just as us as our podcast, I thought it was really sick. It was so much fun. There was, when people started showing up that I didn't know. Yeah. That's when I knew that this yeah. was going to be a success. Well, it, you yeah. say that, but we showed up and there were people there we had never met before. <laughs> I loved it so much. Like, look, I know a lot of people, and a lot of people I knew were there at the party, but when there's people I don't know, and there aren't that many of those. That's when you know we've actually got some reach out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's and all... it was it felt real good to look around and just see so many people jamming games of commander with strangers, with friends, with people we'd never met before or met only online or whatever. And it was cool. It well, was really, really cool. Not to take anything away from us. And um I had the store was I, amazing, by the way. Yeah, the store is amazing. But I did have a secret cabal of uh, content creators that I was talking to and I knew they were all going to be there and you were on that of course even you saw all of that and um, they very kindly signal boosted Josh retweeted our thing and said he was going to be there um, uh, Ryan Green did uh, he, he reposted it as well uh, the Commander's Brew guys even reposted it so we had a lot of help in, in getting there it wasn't just our reach it was the mighty reach of uh, Josh Lee Kwai and the rest of us <laughs> It so worked. It, it helped, yeah. Well, it and never it, works, right? It, exactly, right? I just wanted to be able to provide... Um, it, it, like, it came together all at the last minute, and I wanted to make sure that we all, as Commander players, had a place to play where we weren't going to get chased away by the judges. And uh, ironically, of course, I, I said something in the, in the spiel where it looked like I was going to end up chasing people off their tables. <laughs> yeah, like when you're like, all right, everybody get up. I was like, no. Everybody get up. Oh, wait. <laughs> Don't get up. What's happening? We just started again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it was just, it was neat. And there were a lot of really cool decks there. There were. Like, there were a lot of really cool decks. A lot of people doing weirdo combos I'd never seen. I saw a lot of people playing silver bordered cards all over the place. That made me real happy. Like, yeah. It feels like, it felt like everybody was just enjoying themselves in a very casual and relaxed way. And it was just really cool to see. Yeah, and like I came out of that party like glowing, like I was just so. We were very happy. tired, but we were very happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my it, god. It was uh, it was this the the second of what would turn out to be four very late nights. Um, and and <laughs> that is the truth. That was still recovering. He's still recovering. No joke. Um, yeah, that was a blast. Uh, meeting people. We had we did um, a series of videos, which I'll probably I'll try to edit and put up, where we interviewed folks. We had the Yeti uh, microphone, which is what Shivam is using right there, right in the center on the bar with the Dragon and Meeple logo. Uh, it turned out to be really great that Yeti in the bar. Yeah, it was. Like, great. I was expecting that it was going to pick up a lot of sound, but when we listened back to some of the recordings, it was amazing. Yep. And then I was really impressed. Um, and then a bunch of folks arrived, and we fired off a, a tournament. It was it was the largest individual commander tournament I've run, and as prizes, we gave away these T-shirts that uh, uh, we made with all of our in little mana symbols. If you look at the commander and logo above our heads right now, those mana symbols are our. They're legally distinct, as one might say. Mana symbols. They are actually legally legally distinct. And uh, but I, that was a callback to uh, Gavin's appearance on our show. And, who also uh, showed up at the party. Yeah, who showed yeah, up randomly. by surprise. I didn't even know he was in town. He's, yeah. He did a super secret GP appearance. Yeah, it turns out he was in town to go to Disneyland with his family yes. and cut out for Friday Night Magic. Yep. Like, yep. Um, I found out, uh, because I invited him, of course, to the party. And right. um, I found out he was at Disneyland. And I was like, well, oh, just, just steal some time away. And he was like, no, I can't do it. It's a family vacation. And then he showed up. And <laughs> like, what are you doing here? It was, was awesome. there for like the whole Gavin. time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so listeners have already seen that video, I think, because when uh, Shivam, when you sat down to talk with Gavin on mic, Gavin on mic, I uh, I was doing the the stream, which is that horrible like 420p or whatever it is, but still, 
It was oh, like just like handhelding it. On yeah, the totally handheld, oh. and ugh, ugh. Anyway, um, yeah. So that was Friday, and uh, then uh, went back with the Brothers War guys, and they were staying at my house, and we ended up uh, just chatting until three, four, like three o'clock okay. in the morning, and uh, yeah. Then then the next day was super painful. Because and it started it was raining like hell. Yeah, it was raining. It was raining. Yeah. And uh, you guys, you folks went to breakfast, and then Olivia, I think you went to the the con hall. Yes. Okay. And uh, it must have been exciting based on remember. your reaction. Oh, yeah. Saturday no, was the elf day. Just... And then, and then. Saturday oh yeah, was that was elf day. day. We were absolutely like uh, tournament. Yeah, and uh, you were. It started at nine, but it was actually. Oh so, yeah, we got there early. Yeah. And you were Blood Braid Elf? Is that what it was? No, I was Wellwisher. Yeah, okay. she was Wellwisher. And Tappy Toes was dressed up like Nettle Sentinel. Oh, now, okay. As a diehard elf player, I was super thrilled to see two of the greatest elves ever. And those costumes looked sick. Thank yeah, they did. You. I only saw the one picture on uh, Twitter. So maybe uh, on the YouTube version of this, we'll have a, a couple of more pictures. Um. Yeah, but that was neat. And then I picked up Shivam in the rain, and that was an adventure unto itself uh, because we oh, ended up caught in trying traffic. Trying back up around to leave the staple center while there's all the traffic in the rain and yeah. angry cops looking at us. Yeah, it I was, was like, terrible. Was throw a baseball bat through the window is going to be great. But and as terrible as that was, it was ultimately worth it because we ended up at Frankenson with Ryan and Zach and and you. This video of that, of course, we were streaming that. So, uh, if Tell I could us... explain to the listener yes. what Frankenstein was. So, my friends, it didn't yeah, go away. It is, is, still is. Imagine, if you will, going to San Diego Comic Con or, I don't know, AX or Fanime Con or Gen Con or let's say perhaps all of them at once. <laughs> let's say you went to the dealer's room of yeah. every convention that has ever been running uh, seven day, I mean, two days a week for the entire year without the rest of the con. It was literally just like going into a, a market in Singapore or Hong Kong or something. Just all these stalls and cages just jammed next to each other. And they had every kind of toy you could imagine. Yeah. Uh, like Funkos, machines, like uh, Mecca. They had anime. They had video games. They had like sports memorabilia, movie memorabilia, and like a whole baseball cage full of magic cards and Yu-Gi-Oh oh. cards and Pokemon cards. and More than that. Like, with like Dang. retro arcade games it was intense yeah uh frankenstein is is it's billed as a collectibles show um and i think they call it a show so that they can get around certain restrictions about vending but either way it's a collectible show and like shivam said if you've never been to a market in hong kong or um uh any of the other places he named i've only been to hong kong and beijing and shanghai and uh they're crazy markets. They're like just jammed together with all sorts of jewelry rate stuff. And this is it just east of Los Angeles and filled with collectibles. And it's, it's amazing. There's an entire area of, uh, they call it the magic, the gathering tournament area. And it's all of these vendors, some of whom have been there for years with piles of cards in the corner. It's just amazing. And we took plenty of pictures and we even got a couple of games in, which was really cool. We didn't get chased away once while we were there (laughs) well we did when it was closing but actually it was hella fun i sat at a table with two super friends deck a vanifar deck and then my hapatra deck and it was delightful because these guys didn't necessarily know what hapatra did so it was just like oh here's 38 snakes and a viridian longbow attached to a death test snake yeah okay well you got no flyers right i'm like there's no flyers on my table and he's like i'm going to attack you with attraction i'm like i kill it and he was like, I'm going to kill that bow right now. I'm like, good idea, because you're going to regret it if you don't. Yeah. Uh, that was amazing. The, that, the, <laughs> it was so much fun yeah. to play with people who had no idea who we were and did not care one way or the other. Yeah. So it was right. just like, I'm sitting down with strangers playing commander the way God intended. We don't talk about religion here, Shiva. That's right. You don't. <laughs> See, ever since I joined the CAG, it means commander <laughs> and god. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, um, yeah, we did end up uh, playing a lot of games there, and then we had a, a couple of streams, and 
there's the funny stream where Zach, uh, like, <laughs> Zach comes in underneath the camera and then just rises up in front of the camera. Very funny. Uh, they're, they're two naturally funny people. And uh, then we made the trek back, and the trek back wasn't too bad, where we uh, showed up at the hall, and uh, that's where those lovely pictures of people playing on the floor and everybody crammed into the, the restaurant come from. Because when we got there, um, Sean Tabaris and... Uh, um, Andy Bentley and a couple of other people basically just organized a, like their own commander event right there Commander Cafe, and filled the restaurant to capacity and not just this one area where we were but all across the restaurant because Channel Fireball did not provide any space for casuals to play um, the convention center is large uh, and the hallway is fairly large and yet there were no spaces for commander to play. So we have a bunch of pictures and maybe on the YouTube version, you're seeing them of, uh, children like laying on the floor because that's the only place there was space to do it. And we were all kind of crunched together on these little cafeteria tables, but we managed to get some games in. So it wasn't all bad. It was actually great. <laughs> It was really cool. So uh, that was actually where the, one of the best games I had of the entire weekend was. So first off, um, when we were going to Frankenstein's, when you were picking me up, uh, that's when Sean and Andy and uh, everybody got together and started that you know Commander Cafe where they yeah. sat down, basically put a flag out, and then just started getting people. They had like Kessler was there, the Master of Modern People, all of like just like all of our ancillary friends and stuff were all hanging out there, and then one of our listeners. A guy named Laird, who's from far north of California, was there with his friends. And he sat down and he had tweeted me. He's like, oh, my God, you're here. I would love to meet you. And I was like, yeah, I'm definitely here. Just, let's find a game. He's like, are you in the Commander Cafe? And I'm like, as it happens, yes, I literally am right here. And so I sat down with him, him and his friend uh, Cairo. And we sat down and played a game. And Cairo was playing on uh, Pier and Toothy. I was playing my soldier deck by request. And uh, he was playing a, a wind grace deck. And so I started like spamming out soldiers, doing the thing, you know, I was like soldier, 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 showing off my Tajik, showing off my soldier tokens. They were really cool. Was, everybody was happy to see it. And so I destroyed the uh, Simi player because he got to slow start and nothing was happening. And then uh, Laird puts out Glacial Chasm. Glacial Chasm, the cumulative upkeep land, which says you can't do any damage or damage is reduced to zero for all those judges out there. Which, since I had like no land destruction, meant that I was just sitting there watching. And it was like, imagine if there was a giant canyon, and on one side is a whole ever growing army of soldiers pacing angrily back and forth, shaking their pole arms <laughs> and the guy on the other side. While on the other side, there's a big cat thing. And it's just like. <laughs> my Welcome to live video, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so like, there's a big cat thing coming out, and. He was just like, okay, and I'm going to use Thespian Stage and get Merit Lage out. And I'm like, that's not good. I have no flyers. I just have a bunch of tokens. Yeah. However, I had a sword to plowshares. So I plowed the Merit Lage. Oh but God. you know what is great when you have a cumulative upkeep that takes life? Getting 20 extra life. Yeah, it turns and out. made the game go like 400 turns longer. So I had I had 14 turns and I like I had 14 soldiers and like a million other just real things and he goes torment of hailfire and I'm like well there's all my soldiers gone I built back up to another 35 soldiers plus my entire army was spread out I had a chroma's memorial I had all this stuff catapult master was out there to exile anything he played it was incredible and then he looks at his deck and he draws a card Phil is standing there staring at me because he's just like what are you doing chief and I'm like I'm trying to get through. And Laird goes, excuse me, Phil, as a neutral observer, could you look at this and tell me if it works the way I think it does with protection? Yeah, yeah. And Phil pick, stops and picks up this card, and then with his best poker face he's got, it's just like, yes, it will. <laughs> and Laird is like, tap, 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 tap. Uh, in Garrick's wake? Yeah. Because I had, I had, I had 18 soldiers. Yeah. I had, like, 25 other creatures i had tajik out i had perforos out i had elspeth out and i also yes. had a million i would and i had a strip mine in my hand and i had a um decree of justice in my hand and i was just like and he liked my board yeah and i was just like immediately 
like super saiyan level salt yeah. just like pouring out like, whoa i top deck that strip i top deck that strip mine killed that thing gone. and then just went anointed procession plus decree of justice plus perforos means 20 points to your face wow. eat it wind grace and then we were like oh, that was a great game thank you so much it was wonderful <laughs> to meet you guys you're such good sport yep and um, it was delightful and then, and then uh, oh and yeah then, and then after that, um, we uh, uh, I broke for dinner with uh, the other folks while you finished that up, and then we went to uh, the Masses of Modern or uh, the Kessler party, I think it was really, mm-hmm. and um, then uh, you you were there too, right, Olivia? I had an amazing game with Tessa. It was a five-person commander game. I know business winning. Um, <laughs> Was that the one with the 164 the... treasure tokens or whatever? No, that was against Josh on Sunday. Um, that oh. takes again. I actually took a picture of my board. It's that good. Uh, I'll just say what I had at the end. You should send us the picture and then we'll put I'll it up on clear. the YouTube version. I will. Um, uh-huh. So we are robotting a little bit. Hold on a second. Um, give it a moment. Are you still ver- Okay, now you seem to be doing all right. And Shivam is doing a wonderful impression of a mannequin. He's very yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, but we can go. Okay. So, um. The uh. Let's see. Okay. There's Josh beating me. All right. So my and my final board state was Kambal, Console of Allocation, Regna the Redeemer, Tesa, Skull Clamp, Anointed Procession, Elspeth, Sun's Champion at seven. Smothering Tithe was at five. I had Ethereal Abomination. Altar of the Brood. Oh, my God. 23 warrior tokens. Oh, my and, God. Uh, Zulaport Cutthroat. Scuttling Doom Engine with Helm of the Host on it. This is what you had out? Yeah. Scuttling Doom Engine with Helm of the Host? That's nice. Hey, if someone's running Prot White Black, it's colorless. What that am I supposed delightful. to do? delightful. <laughs> I love scuttling time, Doom Engine. Well, and then of course, if Tace is on the board and it dies, then you get to hit someone in the in the face for twelve. And <sighs> if there's more than one of them, then that's twelve every time. So, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. My uh, my game with Tace. When we get into Sunday, I'll chat about that because it's was, interesting yeah. to note there was a jet like... there taking stats of every commander game. <laughs> <laughs> that was going on all weekend long. Yeah, that's Jeremy. And, yeah, Jeremy. And on Sunday, okay. he told me the three most popular commanders at GPLA over the hundreds of games that he recorded were New Tesa, or rather, Najila first, New Tesa second, really? and uh, Vanifar the third. Okay. Were the three I most common I'm, commanders. I'm, I'm surprised by Najila, and I only think I'm surprised because I haven't managed to make her yet. But I mean, because I know she's actually very good. Um, she's really I have, good. I have a Nagila like half I finished have on never, my desk. Never run into her in the wild. Really? Really? Huh. I think she was in a lot of the tournament pods. That makes Cause sense. Because Nagila just ruins tournament pods. She'll just come in and like decimate them. Don't get me started about making Commander competitive. Yep. Nope. That's the whole thing. That's the important thing. Uh, uh, anybody who isn't already aware. The commander event that we ran, even though it had a tournament in it, it's not a competitive tournament at all. It's totally casual. Like the only thing that was on the line were uh, T-shirts that we were giving away, and we're giving them away just because we want people to wear the T-shirts, right? Um, and not because they're actually like super valuable or anything. Um, hey, don't undercut us yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, these this first run, it's a collector's edition, especially if you have a groaning wild green <laughs> i yeah. mean that's not completely out of flavor for green they probably yeah, have just... trees that make noise and yeah I mean, it, it checks out it's just maybe the less it's it's the less known you know theme. you know I, I meant to say uh the first t-shirt i gave away was uh on thursday night to dana 
and uh i you know the the phrase was growing wild and it was the it was proper it was had a typo and as i gave it to her i said mm -hmm. I was thinking of you when we came up with this phrase, growing wild. And she was like, oh, and it was wonderful. I got oh, to see since, Dana win. Since we're talking about, yeah, I was just talking about Saturday highlight. My absolute bar none greatest moment. Oh, sorry, I bumped the desk. I'm going to get a text about how I bumped the desk. Uh, my absolute <laughs> bar none greatest moment this weekend was Dana making a Period, end of story. There was yeah. no better, there, nothing better came from MTG LA. And Dana Fisher making day two. Yeah. I will fight anyone that wants to challenge me on that. Look, you don't want to fight her. Don't challenge her on that. And uh, Dude, it really is good. It was so cool. I, when I saw her dad starting to cry, I started to cry while we were hanging up there at the bar because I was just like, you know, like, oh, I'm TG Dad watching his daughter just do something. It was amazing. It felt real good. Right. Yeah. And that game was actually legitimately close. Oh, and I was, was like, it? oh my God, she's going to like lose and this is going to be real bad. Because they weren't streaming it. They did after though. They did full stream with yeah, commentary. What good it's is on that YouTube now. After the fact, I know. Because um, yeah. I was busy trying to like figure out how I could watch it. We were there at cosplay. What was it you called it? The cosplay cabin. The cosplay cabin. <laughs> so we were there. Like we'd come back, and I told Adam, like, "Hey, you know." I should have called it the cosplay chalet. Ah, there you go. That would have been good. But uh, it was actually that fancy. We could we could switch it if we needed to. Um, I told Adam, "Hey, text me and let me know, like what's going on and everything." And so I was just watching Twitter because obviously Adam was busy. Uh, and someone said Dana's in her last match. And if she wins, she's in. And I'm just like tearing off my cosplay, trying to find like real human clothes. Like, how do I get over there fast enough? And obviously, so we were trying to like watch it on Twitch or something. And of course, they weren't streaming it. So fuck, what do we do? Sorry. It's like, what do we do? And, uh, we saw again on Twitter, like day two, and I just screamed. We took shots, and then uh, Sydney and I, Tappy, took, just threw on like our guild shirts and ran over to the convention hall. I just put her on my shoulders, and we did laps around the main event area. She got interviewed by Marshall on top of my shoulder. We still, the two of us together, were still not as tall as you. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that was absolute like highlight of the weekend. I would forsake everything else that went down but just for that. Because yeah, that was really good. It was incredible. That was really cool. Um, and uh, so on Saturday at uh, the Masters Modern Party, um, mm -hmm. we uh, we played a deck um, over in the corner. We were, you know, everybody was chaos drafting except for us. And so, uh, and I, I say except for us, I mean, it was uh, the Brothers War guys, me and um, Nick Berry, uh, who is Patapit on um, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And he had this deck that he borrowed from... Um, at Swords to Plow share Swords to Plow, right? Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. I get that right? Um, Sean, and yeah, he first, um, uh, Card Kingdom. Yeah, he works at Card Kingdom now, and uh, he used to be on a couple of different podcasts, and and so we've talked over the years. But this is a a really cool deck. It's a D and D deck where, uh, the deck plays these large threats that are uh, enchantments or artifacts that just change the way the world works. And it's a dungeon, and then he puts, uh, he offers to remove different things to, the, like, he, he says, I'll sword supply share that creature, or I'll destroy that enchantment that he just created and put out there if, you know, somebody uh, destroys this other thing for me. And so he's, like, manipulating things, yeah. And then he plays big creatures, and the creatures themselves are, like, the big boss, yeah. So we'll have him on the show, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's like Sean. a dungeon crawl. It was actually really cool. That looking. Sounds it was really, really cool. cool. That's yeah, why I love this format because you can do stuff yes, like that. Yes, you can do stuff. And he's like, "Look, we're just playing a game of Commander. I'm just telling you what my deck will will do." And he was playing Zedru as the Commander, and so he'd create these world altering, uh, not world enchantments, but these world altering right. enchantments, and just give them out, <laughs> so that he could then gain life Happy and birthday. cards. And you know, he was trying to win the game, so it was cool. I won that game though. I like it. I like. <laughs> Dude, that deck looks so much fun. Yeah, yeah. It felt like it, it felt like just an deck. entirely brand new way to play Commander. Yeah, it did. It felt like a brand new way to play. It was almost like, like Arch Enemy, but um, without the uh, mono focus, right? Yeah, it was more like just right. environmental change. Yeah, like like almost like Plane Chase, but yeah. more focused Commander style. So we'll have have him on the show soon, and uh, we'll do. Uh, he has both 
a, a, a version with uncards and a version without because some uncards are difficult to access. Yeah, like I was playing, uh, I was playing the Chaos Draft because Chaos Draft is technically my absolute favorite format, but there's no such thing as Chaos Mandarin. So until there is, <laughs> uh, but I got to pick a uh, foil Avacyn from my second pack, so That's I can't right. complain. That's pretty um, good. Yeah, it was like. I'd be okay with it that. It was hell of fun, man. Like my deck was great, <laughs> and it lie. worked out really right, well. Right, Olivia. Yeah, a foil <laughs> Avacyn, not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Can't complain. Um, uh, and so that takes us to Sunday, the last day, always the saddest day. Also, the one day we could easily find casual space because the hall was really empty in comparison. Although, ironically, just as you were getting ready to leave, like the whole caravan was getting ready to take off, right. they so, chased us away, and we had to go to the main time event time. and, uh, right. and yeah. actually play in the main event area. Um, Sunday is actually the day I got the most commander games in. It felt like, yeah. like, I, was played, like I played like four or five of them. Uh, yeah, I think I got the most in too, but it was still like two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was cool because I got to play with like various different groups of listeners. I got to play with a meet up different like podcasters and stuff. Yeah. And it was all weekend long. I had been running an experiment for the CAG to try out the new London Mulligan and variants of it. And so it was interesting to collect all that data. And I think ultimately it's not going to be good for our format. It's not going to be good trash, for our format. It's trash for because our the format. idea for the listeners who don't know, the London Mulligan is going to be you draw seven and then you look at it. If you don't like it, you shuffle it back into your library and then draw a new seven. And if you like it, then you put one card underneath your library. Yeah. If you don't, For you put it aside, you shuffle it back in, draw another seven, and then you put two cards underneath your library. So we tried that. That was too much shuffling. So then we tried a variant where it's like, draw seven, put that seven aside. Draw seven, put that seven aside. Draw seven. Okay, I'll take that seven. Then I put two cards underneath, or shuffle all the cards back in, and then I put the two cards on the bottom. And we're like, Grenzo problem. That's bad. So then we're like, just take the cards you're going to discard, put them into the pile, shuffle the whole mess in. And they were like, or we could just draw seven until you find seven that you can play with, shuffle the rest in and move on with your life. Yeah, but that's... that's a, it's a casual format. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, because people... We care because people will abuse that. Right. Well, people are going to abuse every single mulligan format, no matter what it is. I mean, the current one doesn't I, I, get person, hideously true. abused. No, I, I don't disagree. Um, What... Eden has always been friend, like competitive but friendly. Like no one, like we'd rather you play the game and like actually win, yeah. than beat you because you only had to never get more than two lands. Well, yet, right. So our thing's always been, and my play group at least, our thing's yes. always been draw seven until you have a hand. Then the whole mess of it gets shuffled back into your deck. Our our play group, uh, the one at uh, my workplace. I almost said the name of my workplace. How about that? Um, our our play group, um, basically, if you get down to like, if if you're at five cards and you're like, I still can't use this, then we're all just like, I'll just draw back up to seven. Um, but we do if it's if it's anywhere in between that, if it's like, you know, you stick with five, you stick with five and you you scry. Um, right. Because... I actually think the scry rule works pretty well for us. Yeah. For I commander, think. yeah, it's totally not a problem. I don't mind the scry rule. I just, I and I mean, at a... yeah. The people I play with, like what I learned was you always just friendly mulligan because we're here to play the game, not because one of the things is people were like, I, I, guess I heard a lot of people saying things like, Oh man, it's gonna be super abusable, I'm gonna be able to get my combo every time. And I'm like, Okay, well, in that case, sure, you got your combo now, you won on turn one. Now we shuffle up and start over again. And I no mean, one likes you, like, there's, there's so nothing on the table, there's no stakes here that you didn't. I mean, yeah, you won. But now we have two and a half hours left of our playtime. Okay, let's start over. And see, this is where I'm going to hold my tongue about the a lot of things. You lost all of that. that. Yeah, so Can you, you held your tongue that? because we didn't hear that at all. Oh, okay. I said, and this is where I would have a lot of th I'm going to hold my tongue because I have a lot of to say about the whole, like, I'm going to make a turn two combo deck for winning prize ticks. Bye. But we won't. Because well, yeah. Not I mean, that's... About. Uh, it, that's one of the I actually had a long conversation with somebody from Channel Fireball in the days leading up and uh, he said that um, when I when I was 
trying to make the case for this and and even bef- after I had already floated that we would pay for space like it was a side event yeah. he said that the uh, the side events serve the needs of the commander and casual players and I'm like you don't understand it you just genuinely don't I want to I want to say I want to ask him but I'm not I know and I pointed out, my I was monkey, like, not my monkey, not my circus. Right. And, and I pointed out uh, that, you know, that that's actually a, a very competitive format. And the people we p- end up playing with at these tables where we, we have to be, what is it? The uh, commander nomads, right? Who was it yeah. who said that? The brew guys? Bruce Richard. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Bruce Richard with the uh, um, commander nomads. And I uh, see, I knew they were on the East side of the continent. I just didn't. Right. Um, that, uh, that, that's like, not what we're looking for we're not looking for a combo deck that wins on turn two to three in order to grind for prize packs and i told him that and he just doesn't understand or isn't allowed to understand depending so one of the things we've been talking about in the cag like this is the first week we've really had activity and like discussion and one of the issues is like look commander's a broken format we all know that there's ways to be abusable and break it in half right like Commander is inherently full of super powerful cards that you can do super powerful things with. The thing that keeps it from getting out of control is the fact that there's that agreement between friends that we're sitting here to have a good time. If your deck goes off, that's awesome. I'm super happy that it went off. But like, we've got a couple of hours. Let's sit and let it percolate. Enjoy yourself, yeah. right? Whereas, I lo- oh, go ahead. Like, if you're at the tournament scene or something and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, look, there's prize money on the table. I want to jam it, get in, get out, get my ticks. Okay, fine, I get it. That's you've got a goal, your deck is built to do this. But that's not the way most of us play eighty percent right. of the time you play commander. Like if I'm sitting here at my with my play group hanging out at a store or at my office or at my house, if we're at our houses, right? If you invite a bunch of people to your house for a party, you're hanging out, you're playing commander, and someone pulls out their, I don't know, whatever, like Narset win on turn one deck. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for Here's showing us bag. your Have Narset nice deck. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And, that, and that's why partial uh, Paris even worked because, um, and, you know, all the variant mulligan rules uh, work at your table. The problem is the commander rules are designed to work at game stores as well or in public venues. And they're supposed, they're there so that everybody has a common uh, uh, way to construct decks and to play the game. And if any of those common ways are open for abuse, and some of them are, sure, you're going to get people who do that. And the real problem with that is the story that Sean Watson always used to tell on this show, which is somebody comes in and is that person, right, who is just there to demonstrate how much money they've put into their deck and they beat the other people around them. It actually, he witnessed somebody purchase a commander precon, sit down to play, and then this person proceeded to stomp them and drive them out. And that's why you don't allow mulligans that, you know, you can fish for your combos and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah, it's just so... I mean, that's part of what I'm trying to impress upon the rules committee is that the idea of tournament rules of having competitive EDH like being a thing that we acknowledge exists is because people don't just play commander with their friends anymore. Right. Now you're going to GPs, now you're going to stores, now you're playing with strangers who have no investment in your good feeling. Right? <laughs> right. right. Like, like the idea is like when you're hanging out with your pals, like my goal, I know that I not everybody's as Pollyanna as I am, but my goal is that I want us to sit there and I want everybody to leave my house feeling good. Like I want us to sit, play a game of commander, even if you lost at least you felt like you didn't waste your time. Whereas if you're at a store and you go and you play against somebody who's got no investment in your happiness, they're just going to like curb stomp you and you're going to walk away and be like, well, why am I doing this? I just wasted three hours right. of my life and got nothing. Yep. Right? So the first the first time I ran into this in the wild was uh, GP Vancouver 2016, I think. It was a couple years ago. And um, they had commander pods and it was like, oh, holy crap, we can get like, it, but they had like a full tournament. So it was like, we actually like you get winter pods, you'd break down and keep things. So it was, it was their like scheduled on demand or not a scheduled one, not an on demand. Mm-hmm. So this guy sits down, like three of the people here, you can tell our commander players and we are here to see what kind of lunacy the others can get up to. And one dude is a competitive grinder who is there to get ticks to get his big card or feel good about himself. I don't know. He <laughs> was a complete jerk to all of us. 
And on turn three, he just like kind of like put all these cards out. And he's like, oh, I'm infant. So unless you guys can stop me. And expected us all to concede. And so I told him, okay, count it out. <laughs> and he looked at me like I had stabbed a puppy in front of him. And I said, count out every damage to all three of us. I was like, count out all 120. Like, we're not dead until you count it out. And he had this, he was like, wrecked. <sighs> like, I'm waiting. I'm not signing a slip until I'm dead. As of right now, I'm so. That's great. Yeah. Did he do it? He had to, because I wasn't going to sign a slip. <laughs> <laughs> like, judge, and I told them what happened, and they're like, uh, if she wants you to count it out, you got to count it out, because if you screw up your combo in your execution, it will actually stop Correct. and count against you. That's right. Yeah, so I was like, oh, like, going to hell, dude. <laughs> so when I first experienced <laughs> that, I was like, what was this that I just dealt with? So finally, he does it. He gets all huffy, and I'm just like, violently cursing him as he walks away, of course, and just. I can't even. So I look at the other two guys and was like, do you guys want to actually play a game of Commander? <laughs> so we had a like second game in pod of just us seeing what weird decks we had and what we were trying to do. Yeah. So it was really hard like having in, you know, when I have people, my huge play group of battle, coming over on Sunday to play Commander was, you're going to come over. We're going to play like a six person game. Two hours are going to elapse. I'm going to tell everyone to stop, bring out the roast. We're going to have dinner, get full, and then go back to that game we started two hours. By the way, we've yet to finish because Katie keeps fogging us, and I just decided nobody can play creatures. So <laughs> that's, that's what I'm looking for, right? Like it's the social interaction. It's the right. Yeah. That we all have the, our common bond, but it's it. To see it kind of reduced to, I have the most broken format ever. Let me show you. I'll keep it family friendly. How fast I can win um, is a perversion to me. <laughs> I mean, look, so, I think that there's a there's a time and a place, right? Like if we sit down and we're like, okay, we're going to play Busto Combo time and everybody knows it. And we're all going to bring out our crazy town sure, decks. Sure. Fine. Like, that's when I'll bring out, you know, the Enchantress deck with stasis and, like, you know, pseudo upheaval stuff and just be like, right, I'm going right. to ruin your life because we watch all know we're going to And watch into, me right? pillow for it while I do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's fine. I'll here for it. But, and also just like, look, but I think that part of what the rules committee needs to do is they need to find a way to extend the gentleman's contract out such that in a tournament setting, we still can keep, we either need to say, look, com competitive players, do your thing, make your own rules, have a nice day. Or okay. come up with some kind of rule set that says, look, the spirit of the format is that, yes, you can abuse it, but you shouldn't. Just make sure you call it the social contract as opposed to they're the gentleman's That's contract. what the word I was looking for. Thank you, Phil. That's <clears throat> what I'm, the my concern contract. is that they're not going to care. Because they've put money in and they're trying to get a reward for it. What? So why would you bother? Like if you're there to grind and just get ticks oh. or do yeah. whatever. I'm yeah. just saying, Here's dude, what the social contract takes. is. You may never see. I mean, that's exactly the problem, right? You may never see them again. Yeah. And so, frankly, at that point, you might as well just yeah, grind but... pie gal magic. Yeah. That's well, that's why I don't, I don't think um, like the worst thing about GPLA, uh, not GPLA. The worst thing about GP Las Vegas was um, uh, the commander tournament. Right. There were people there who uh, ground like they were they were grinding that tournament. They were kind of stuck in it because they were getting uh, something like 100 or whatever number of tickets per round they played. The tournament ran really long because no one apparently realized they were playing commander. And uh, so the, the four player games take forever. Try to imagine. Right. Which is another reason why uh, I put a limit on on my event. I'm not saying that. <clears throat> it's the perfect commander event, but it captures the spirit. It's play fast, be done quickly. You can go infinite after an hour because game's got to end. <clears throat> but, Which is reasonable. Yeah, and you're winning a freaking t-shirt. You're not winning like extra packs in order to get some unique prize or whatever that, you know, whatever. And so you you're had winning. people... Oh, go ahead, sorry. You had people who were just stuck there the entire time because they felt like they had put money and they had, they had paid $75 or whatever for this thing. And they wanted no, all the I, tickets. I will never want... play Commander. I have to pay for. Yeah. There you what's, go. What's that, if, Olivia? If, I was saying, if you ever want a great story, 
if you're ever in the same place as my husband, talk to him about that Las Vegas Commander Tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. John will, John will tell us all about it. Oh, he will. <laughs> so they had, like, just the too long didn't read on this one. They had, like, four different prize structures in effect up until the event day. So some people signed up under the auspices of, hey, there's only going to be a cap on people. There's going to be this, there, that. And then even in the hall, there were different rules. There were different prize structures. There were different uh, info sheets for that commander event. Yeah. My husband signed up under one premise, received another, and was not pretty. Mm. And that's what I'll leave it. That's his story to tell because I will just get salty and then I will do my sponsorship <laughs> channel Fireball. And... <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, if, if you're sponsored by Channel Fireball, this... This might not be the best show to <laughs> sponsored. Um, so but, uh, okay, Sunday, so though. so Sunday, I made a list of uh, some of the people we played with. In fact, all of the people I played with. There was a guy named uh, Rahan who came up, uh, and he was a big fan of the show, and he started saying, "Yeah," and uh, I was looking forward to seeing Shivam, and I, I went, "You mean Shivam?" And I pointed down there, and he's like, "Oh, Shivam!" And he ran over to you, and he got your signature as well. Oh, that was. Um, really sweet actually that was yeah. really really nice Aww. yeah it was really sweet um played with mike who's a designer uh for kessler and uh he's added a beard since the last time i saw him like a big beard and it so did. i didn't recognize him at first um did. yeah we played with kessler uh and kessler had a crazy deck but it was it was, it was super crazy um was it his cast deck uh, no, this was his uh, Geist's Hate Draft deck. Yes, oh yes. Super Friends. It was Super Friends, um, even though he tried to play it off like it wasn't Super Friends. But so. he played like seven Planeswalkers, so... Uh, no, he has uh, 14 Planeswalkers in that deck. It's a Super Friends deck. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, then uh, Jimmy, who we've yeah. seen at multiple GPs, um, uh, toward uh, the end, uh, I met Kieran, uh, he started playing at Eldritch Moon. I'm actually reading this off my phone. I have the list here. Uh, oh, yeah. Kieran was playing um, Daxo. Sorry, was playing Bruce Tall and Thrasios, and it was pretty, Ooh, pretty devastating. Um, I see. Uh, Nick. The best bear in Magic. Yeah, the best bear. Uh, Chris. Oh, sorry, Glenn. Um, Chris came up to us toward the end as we were leaving, and he built a Calamity Giant tribal deck. Then he built Rafik. Because he was looking for a change of pace. You just wanted to hate, get hated out of every game. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yep. My Enchantress deck is a secret freak deck. It's just not the face card. Right. I'm just not oh. going to tell anybody that. Yep. That's um, how my deck is our deck was. But I, actually, let me tell you about a dude who I met at uh, that Sunday, a guy named Ahmad. Or Ahmad. Um, he was an Indian dude, and he came up and was like, I saw you on the Loading Ready Run. Uh, uh, tap tap concede where you talked about Kaladesh and it was amazing to see one of us up there yeah. talking about our thing with depth and looking at these cards beyond just the wallpaper surface and it was enough that I was like tearing up listening to this kid tell me how much it meant to him and I was just like this is that what my hope was holy crap there's another Indian out there that also plays magic and it got we had such a great conversation about all of this stuff because he used to go to Berkeley, so he's local to me, but he's from L.A., so he's local to you. But uh, halfway through, I was like, man, I'm just starving. I, he's like, okay, well, I'm Indian and you're Indian, and you know that you can't just mention that you're hungry and go away without food. He reached into his bag and pulled out this, like, almond like, granola bar and gave it to me. He's like, you know this is what you, – you have to take this. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I mentioned food, and you offered me food this is how this works but it was literally the most indian thing that has ever happened to me at one of these events and i was just like so touched by that just simple cultural touchstone that you like i that's never happened to me before at a at a show like this where i've seen somebody else who gets who who understands the milieu i come from and i was just like i, I was gobsmacked i was just yeah. like so overcome by how cool this was. And then I turned around and ran smack into Cassius, uh, Cassius Marsh, who is very tall and has Dude. a big jeweled Dragon Ball necklace made out of gold. <laughs> and I was like... Yellow diamonds because, you know... Because you're a football player. Why not? Can I, 
Can I just say that watching Dana go up to him and squeal and hug him and introduce herself and then hug him, I mean, that was just wonderful. He is like, he, hug his knee. So I've 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 uh I've played with Cassius a couple of times. Um and he is okay, his decks are vicious. They're really, Dude, really well no made. Joke. No, no joke. joke. Everybody who's like, oh, he's just a, you know, he's just a football player. And he how could he know magic? Vicious. Yeah. No, he is vicious. like one of the spikiest spikes that's ever been. <laughs> yep. That ever spiked. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and, but, but at the same time, one of the nicest people I've ever played magic with. He's yeah, really so... interested. He remembers who I am, which is kind of crazy. He shouldn't. When, when he leans in, he's like, hey, how you doing? It's so good to see you. And then he talks about things that you've done with him. So it's it's pretty weird. It's cool. Yeah, I invited him to come play with me since uh, my office is literally down the street from his office when he is at the 49ers football games. <laughs> yes. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm in the Bay Area. Uh, let's play some uh, cards. Yeah. Like, come by yeah. after work. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's do this. And he's like, yeah, man, you know, I really need to find a play group. And I was like, oh, she even just made a friend. <laughs> <laughs> She's been making friends that, is not news. She's been making was friends the great with guys to break right? them in yeah. half. News. Yeah. yeah. It was great with Dana because Dana had come up to me. She's like, because she saw I was um, mostly out of cosplay and I had just grabbed something, I think, post booth where I had all my stuff. And I was walking back towards where we were all playing Commander on Sunday. Ash just saw me. He walks up to me and gives me this big hug. And he's like, where are you going? I was like, back over there to play Commander. He's like, you're not leaving, right? I was like, no, I'm going back over there to play Commander. He's like, okay, I'll be right over. Sounds great. Yeah. Dana had apparently seen this, and she runs up to me. She's like, you know Cassius. How do you know Cassius? Why do you know all the famous people? <laughs> yeah, Dana. I was like, honey, I know you. That's how I know all the famous people. You brought me into this world. Yeah. So she's like, can I meet him? I was like, he should be coming. Here. I'm, we will absolutely get you in front of him. She's just like, ee! does her little squeal, and then, like, you know, tears off. She's so, so small. You know, I it's... see him walking up, and I call her, and I was like, hey, Dana. And I just kind of gesture over it. And before I, cause I was like gonna straight up introduce her. Like a bat out of hell. There she was just right in front of him. Hi, I'm Dana Fisher. <laughs> you have Hello. to, like one of the funny thing is like, so, you know, you meet Dana and you hang out with her and she's in some ways she's, you know, she's really okay. smart first of all. And so that, and her record makes us think like she's, She's older than she actually is, but the truth is, she's she's an eight year old girl, and she's yeah. just not shy, and she goes up to people and introduces herself. And uh, the other thing is, like, w like we're like, uh, it's Dana Fisher, right? And right. and she is no stranger danger at all. And but no, it's not that. It's yeah. it's that she, um, yeah, she does, and it's it's that she doesn't understand her situation is abnormal. <laughs> mm -mm. This is completely normal everyday life for yeah. a yep. weekend. And that's... just like to anybody else like that's in our community, meet these people that are like, wait, no, you don't just go up and approach them, right? Like you you wait your turn, <laughs> you make your way an introduction, <laughs> you don't like step on their toes. You know yeah. that they have like a real thing they're doing. And Dana's just like, oh, hey guys, it's Dana. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah I was like, hey be Josh, tiny. you want to introduce amazing. me to your friend maybe? And Dana's like, I now know this ogre. He is my yep. friend too. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 awfully nice. But uh, one of the things you said, uh, Olivia, uh, reminded me of um, uh, another truism. It's that when you see these people at conventions, now you don't be rude and you don't, like you said, step on their toes and stuff, and you don't interrupt them and whatnot. <laughs> but definitely. If you see somebody from the magic community who has a bunch of followers or whatever, or maybe it's a content creator or Cassius, go up and say hi. Everybody sure. is there to say hi to people. Absolutely. So just go ahead and do it. We have to tell people that in the, like, come say hi to us in cosplay. It's okay. Yeah. Don't expect us to know who you are when you have an anime avatar. Introduce yourself with your real face and your real name. We won't know. Yep. Just like give us, hey, you know, I'm. You know, uh, for a great example, Electro. How do you even say your name? Electro Tal. Electro Tal. I'm Electro Tal from Twitter. I will know who you are if you tell me. I mean, hey, you know I'm, who I am I'm because Shivam. my face is also. Awesome. I know, but well, I understand. But yeah. But if I'm Shivam with a Dio Spot avatar, I'm gonna know that you you you're a person that does stuff, and we've interacted at some point. Yep. But and that's like the, I think that's the only thing is like if you do interact with someone regularly. At, 
make sure you preface the fact that that's how they know you yeah. because otherwise we get to feel like jerks when people are like, Oh yeah, it's great talking to you. And it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but that's the only thing. Otherwise come up, say hi. Like if you have time and ask us if you want to jam a game, if we can't, we'll wish yeah, just you don't well. do that it's 15 foot happens. circle of like away yeah. from us. Like, dude, we're there to play too. Like, it's fine. Come it's worth noting, uh, viewers slash listeners, that if uh, you go up to Olivia and she's either in a Traxa or in Brea costume, uh, she probably can't see you. So <laughs> she'll never recognize you. <laughs> nope. I'll know your shoes if I'm in a Traxa. Yeah. I'll know that you're a humanoid shape if I'm in Brea. Yep. And Are those like, contacts yeah, just so opaque? You... Almost. So they're, they're uh, mesh around the pupil or right on, uh, like a tiny little circle where the pupil is mesh and a bit of so everything has a fog on it if i'm close or it's someone i already know i'll recognize that like i recognize i can see all the pictures on like my deck when i'm playing with those but yep. i can't read the text so i have to like have yeah she 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 does this with the card she does this like she changes I get the my, angle I get my picture away and then i come in close to see what yep. the text was just the like an old lady <laughs> Pretty much, but um, yeah. And then the tracks, so I can't see anything in front of me, so I pull shoes. Also, uh, I ran into Marshall Sutcliffe. It was great to talk to him again. Uh, actually, he ran into me because he was like, "Oh, hey, Shiva, I wanted to catch you before you left." And I'm like, "That's never happened before, but that's cool. I'll take it." <laughs> um, What's it was just there was a lot of just there were so many nice people. There yeah. were so many nice people there. Yeah, and it was just really fun to hang out with everybody. And see everybody again. Like the Brothers War guys are such sweethearts. Tappy Toes is literally the embodiment of is it? She's so like, funny. She he's like a psycho, crazy chaos goblin who is also just like pops her head in and be like, the evolutionary nature of spiders is. And I'm like, what the hell? Because she's a scientist. Because she's a literal sure scientist. Yeah. Who yeah. is also just like insane. Yeah. <laughs> My highlight of Sunday was getting 124 treasure to. That was pretty yeah, good. Tell that story. I was and sitting still across. Still losing the game. Yeah. Still lost the game. What happened? So, I got Revel and Riches that I got. I got mana take with Asa that day. So I got Revel and Riches out real fast. I got Smothering Tide out real fast, and I got Anointed Procession out real fast. <sighs> so I was making a lot of treasure. And I was making a lot more treasure because I had. Zool out and then people started you know, things cascaded so i got up to 43 and i had revel and riches on the board it was it was my game to lose literally i was waiting for josh to finish his turn and that was that so he cyclonic rifted not for overload just oh. single target rifted my revel and riches i still had 43 tokens but, um he had something where was it? Oh, it was Teferi's puzzle box out. Oh. So all of us had to shuffle our hands and start cards for the equivalent. Ooh. Or, you know, sink our uh, hands into our library. And yeah. Draw that many. Whenever someone draws that's an opponent, they have to pay two or I get a treasure token. <laughs> Nobody wanted to lose their mana. So peop I'd be getting... And then, oh, what was that? that? I had anointed procession on the field, too. So when someone drew... Seven cards, I got 14 treasure tokens. And Josh didn't have the maximum hand size and drew 31 cards, I got 60 <laughs> treasure tokens. It was a whole thing. So I had a lot of them. And the problem was, is every time I draw into stuff, like I didn't have anything I could spend it on. <laughs> I know, Ooh. yeah, that card, it's a whole thing. Have you so considered? Anyway, and then. Vinny was running uh, Animar, so he had Prot White Black, so he was just coming. He was gunning for me. So I convinced him to attack Josh. Josh just went nuts and then miscounted his hand. Took Vinny out, took me out. I can't remember. What, uh, it's a red enchant, I think, where you discard a card, it's two damage to the mm -hmm. target opponent or something. So he knocked out Vinny, he knocked out me, or it's to each player. So he knocked out Vinny, he knocked out me, and he miscounted hand and he knocked out himself andrew sat there and won with yargle voltron having swung once at me with <laughs> nothing else but josh miscounted killed everybody but andrew so andrew won 
against Vinny, me, and Josh Lee Kwai with that's, Yargle Voltron. That's amazing. <laughs> that Yargle Voltron deck, by the way, that was hell of fun. That Yargle Voltron deck is incredible. It is so <laughs> much fun. So he was coming for me, and I was going to be out. So I swords the pot chair him, and he did the regenerate Yargle card or whatever. So like he swung once at me and ended up winning the game, having done nothing else. He just got land screwed. And so Josh put out Dictator Crew Fix so we could all start drawing two. And then, of course, I was giving more treasure tokens. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but I got 124 cool. treasure tokens. That was <laughs> That's really cool. That's hilarious. Um, just watched I, Rebel and Riches leave my hand and go to the bottom of my library. I, like, I just uh, I just glanced over, um, and it's a recommendation I was thinking of as well. It's Marionette Master. I love that. Yeah, I, it's sideboarded on both Tasa and in uh, Freya. Yeah. Every time I get it, it's when I don't need it, and there's like another dead. What about um? Every time I pull it out of the of the main deck and put it in the sideboard, the next game is one where it's like, this would have been... Oh my god, with Mary Dead Master, you would have just won instantly. And it went out right, yeah. And uh, that card is there. Maybe, maybe you should, if you have a lot of... Uh, if you have any other Smothering Tithe-like draw effects, maybe you should run um, Teferi's Puzzle Box, too. I know, right? And, but it's a weird combination. Good? Like, you only put it out when you have that Nothing Smothering Tithe. Exactly. Well, it was a tie of anointed procession and riches. Like it was built to just win me the game almost instant. I mean, I had the ten treasure tokens on Vinny's first turn. After <laughs> I got everything so it was like it was just a matter of time. Yeah. And, you just needed to make the loop. And then my beloved rift betrayed me. Your beloved it wasn't rift. For overload. It wasn't for overload. Rift. A oh, rift. Sorry, rift. Yes, rift. Nobody loves rift. No. Nobody I love rift. rift. I love you rift. Rift is very good. Okay, so I'm here on the podcast someone, with two monsters. Just someone said on Twitter that Rift is the Nickelback of EDH. To which I responded, "How dare you!" If by that you mean everybody says they hate it, but it still gets played, sure. <laughs> That's Ooh. really good. Well, <laughs> folks, we have we have been at this. I just checked the time. Um, we've been at this almost uh, two hours. Sorry. No one is going to watch this on either YouTube or Twitch, are you, Charles? And uh, he's still here. There are five Bless people him. still sitting there. Yeah, and Russell came in too. So hi, everybody. What? Um, and so these people rock. <laughs> Thank you, actually, for hanging out with us, everyone. This has been a test okay. of the, the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> what are you Beep. doing? This uh, this has been a test of our streaming. You can see we just kind of whipped this together, and obviously we had some technical difficulties. Um, but uh, we still had fun, and that's what matters. Hopefully you had fun as well. Let's see. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you had enough fun, you should head on over to patreon.com slash commander at MTG or commander at MTG.com slash donations and, uh, or our GoFundMe. Buy a ticket to this ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you can join uh, people here. We only advertise this uh, tonight, at least this uh, this stream, to our patrons because we wanted to test it and uh, see how it goes. And in the future, we'll have some nice uh, interactivity. I'm turning to the chat right now. Um, chat yeah. time. And, uh, yeah, so... We didn't even talk about our epic 40 million hour drive home where I lectured about music to Andrew to keep him awake. My God. Well, and then he uh, told you about, like, his old cancer cancer. journey, and I felt... It was amazing. It was a wonderful talk. And I got in at, like, two. That That sounds... um, Very late for having to get up, like, three hours later. That sounds amazing, to be lectured about music for eight hours straight. Um, Although, I have to admit, Shiva, when you post links to music uh, on your Twitter feed... I, I go and I listen to them and I'm like, this is incredible. Why haven't I heard this? And then I realize it's because I'm not steeped in Indian culture like you are. So <laughs> yeah, Because you don't listen to Mongolian throat singing on the regular. I'm it sorry, turns man. out I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so, or like weird mimetic music that me and Ristic Studies pass back and forth through. Time. <laughs> like, here's a song that was chopped in half and then... The other half was played backwards. You know, we sang for 27 minutes and 38 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, normally we would play the uh, boilerplate that has all the thanks in it. Uh, I have no idea who's going to edit this show, so it's either uh, 
Thanks to Dave or Vanessa. And either way, good luck with that because it's going to be a doozy. Um, and uh, we'll just transfer this over to YouTube so you can see it there. And, uh, I'm sorry I bumped the table editors. Phil got mad at me. I'm I didn't get me. mad at you. I was just like, you, you, I'll, we bump tables and we're not always aware of it. So I figured since you weren't aware of it, because you kept doing I, it again and I mean, again peak, and again. Peak, peak wildebeest over here. So. <laughs> No, I figured, <laughs> but we're not we're not always aware of it, and so you know. Here, hold on a second, <laughs> listeners. Sorry, not to laugh. It li- like... <laughs> listeners enjoy it when we tap while we're talking, so I figure I'll just do it right there. No, um, anyway, uh, and I wasn't getting angry. I'm just like you're Shuffle not aware of it. Cards. Yep. Um, Here's the deal. I have a I have a kind of weird thing to be on on stream. When I have a hammer piece in my hand and an air compressor kicks on every three minutes, 37 seconds, I'm a little, so it's, I need to be reminded. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe we'll do a show like that where you're uh, hammering metal while talking about Commander. I will turn that actually would, on right now. That would be pretty cool, actually. It would be hell sweet. Yeah. Anyway, so um, listeners, thanks for, and viewers, thanks for sticking with us this whole time. Olivia, are you going to take us out? Um, what with you having uh, the guest prefix on whatever it is you're doing here. Um, can, pe- I, I want to see if I can find the, the throw out things in time. I can't. I'm not that good at this. Oh, I, um, uh, yeah, I just opened the uh, show plan you had access to and I went to the bottom of the page so I can see it all. Um, well, let's, I'm going to talk at people and things. And say commander's great while well, I do the exact same thing. You could also just make something up. It's totally okay. I, it's See, funny. Improv is not a thing I do. Um, uh, speaking of improv. People want to. Okay, yeah. So, so listeners and viewers, um, we normally edit this part of the show out where we, <laughs> where we ask the guests to say something and uh, take us out. So all you do is usually hear either me or Shivam or whoever. You, well, it's me or Shivam the last eight, nine months. Just saying, like, would you, you know, dear guest, would you take us out? And then they say something pithy right away. It's usually after five minutes of searching and figuring out what's going on. What I'm doing right Ooh. now is called vamping. Because I think Thank Olivia you. just found what we need. I did. <laughs> Commander, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing off of it. Yep. <laughs> and there it is. Totally worth it. That was Yep. <laughs> Look at her, she's she's broken now. This is what happens. Two hours of oxygen deprivation. At least I'm not in a closet. That's that's why I said oxygen deprivation. And I like being in my closet, ma'am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shine on crazy down. Yeah. I'm thinking of putting some decorations up back there because that's yeah, just a door. A big giant card on the wall. That's actually a perfect spot for like a poster or an oversized card. Yeah, I'm not lucky enough to have an oversized card. Just but Shiva miss. Um hey, so look, so Charles is saying I am here. Thanks, Charles. Uh, uh Rogue Artificer says totally worth it. I'm not sure what he's saying that to. Oh, Charles just says haven't sat here? Commander, I said it was totally... yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Commander, and not always mentally stable, but always fun. Olivia, just get your own recording closet. No tables can fit in there. What is that? Oh, and uh, Rogue Artificer says full on green screen time. And Phil's recording studio doubles as a pain oh. room. Wait, how did Charles know that? No. Um, well, you thanked us for being here. Totally worth Yeah. So there you go. Uh, that's our interactive portion for the evening. We'll get better at this. <laughs> Theoretically. Yeah. Uh, and anybody who's stuck it out this long, which is actually post uh, end of the show at this point. Oh, uh, shall we stop the recordings? Well, no. I mean, we're still streaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, has, uh, like, just give us any tips. Anybody who watches this, listens to it. Just give us tips. We'll we'll try to improve. Now we can do this. I'm going to stop streaming after we stop our recording. So I'm going to stop the recording now. Doot, doot. Two oh. hours. And yeah, Russ, we were actually um, uh, recording the audio locally. So all those times that Olivia dropped out, we'll actually hear it. And it'll be good. Yeah. 
Uh, and now I exp think it's my Discord. My Wi-Fi down here is giving me all the trash in the world because I'm on an extender through a concrete surface. I think no matter what. I'm... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would do it, yes. <sighs> That's why my Twitch stream sucks sometimes. I, I'm just going to like take a sledgehammer and hardline my, my internet. So. You should. I'm actually uh, probably going to run uh, a cable in through a wall. Just so. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. Let's see. This is the exciting part of the show, listeners, where we. Um... Is this where Phil figures out how to turn up the stream? <laughs> no, I'll never figure that out. <laughs> I'm just going to power down all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> OBS, you just click it. Where it says no, I know. I, I know, I know, I know. Let's see. E one. What do we say this was? One six four. One six three. One six three. Charles, this is what you want for a hammer drill bit. You want this. Get steel rounded on the edge. Um and listeners slash viewers. Oh, well, I guess it's just viewers live on the stream right now. This is what you do not want on your weekly episodes, where you see us doing all this garbage uh share right i'm gonna share it to you shivam what what's that i don't know we're quite charming uh one of solid two hours we can probably keep going yeah ow Uh, yeah like when my door opened my son was about to walk in and he had like tear streaming face and he was like sick and coughing and i was like oh this is this is gonna end real badly but then my wife i guess ushered him away yeah <laughs> that's that's where you 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 turn around and you're like get out get out daddy doesn't care get okay, out it's gonna, it's gonna end well <laughs> i am gonna put some oh, sorry i just meant that's gonna finger. end <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna end indeed um well, I need to transfer all my files over to my um, to my storage drive because my hard drive is being full. <laughs> Russ gets it. Just a big power level lever, and Phil just slams everything off. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be kind of funny if I just, you know, did something like this, like reach over, and I'm just like, <laughs> and everything goes. And yes, it's a katana, okay? Um, it's funny. I, I found this, like... Even can you... Can you feel me staring at you through the computer? Because that's what I'm doing. Oh, did you turn the light off? Hell oh yeah, yeah did. oh yeah, that's right. We're staring at Shivam. Is that what we're doing right now? <laughs> God, that was creepy. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, so Why now we have. Why is there in your recording closet, Charlie? Right, Charles. That's the wrong question, and Shivam has the correct question. Um, no, it's funny. So Wednesday, I was cleaning up, uh, preparing for the various house guests and stuff, and uh, I have this bin right next to here, which includes um, uh, this, which I intend to actually do a box opening, the premium edition oh. or whatever of the uh, Heroes of Dominari. And um, oh, is it backwards? Yes. What? is happening what do i export this as again uh 16 bit wave yeah that's it wave. and uh so i show uh ryan and zach like i bring them into the recording booth and see it's backwards i read it it's it it's not backwards do it again Yeah, that's not backwards. Show you backwards to me. Yeah, I know, but I can read it. I mean, it's fuzzy, but it's uh, Trostani discordant. Um, it's out of focus because it's still focusing on you. So I don't know what happened there, but yeah, I guess I got to figure that out. Thank you, OBS. Somebody is going to tell us about that. Yeah, Phil's is reversed, so that's got to be my camera, actually. Oh, you know that. why? Because I just looked at it on my uh, Discord chat versus on the Twitch channel. On the Twitch channel, mine was showing up properly. On the Discord chat, mine was showing up reverse. So I think it's because it's your personal camera showing up that it'll be obverse in the 
whatever it'll we, we'll just have to tinker with it but like i'm looking at your settings right now, phil yeah i know and they're backwards yeah i know so i'll, I'll have to find it um it's just trippy and rad anyway so they spend like all of a minute in in the recording booth they go out and i when i when i was showing when i was cleaning up on wednesday i was like i wonder like i wonder if they're gonna see it and i'm like only Zach is actually going to see this thing, if anybody's going to see it. And it was laying down, and it was buried. And he walks in, he comes out, and he goes, he goes, yo, what? Why do you have a ninja sword in your recording booth? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, well, doesn't everybody? Good question. It is a good question. Uh... All right. Uh, yeah, I think it's guys. time. Yeah, this was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, and now I'm going to shut the stream off. So, uh, bye, Twitch people. And uh, it was really good chatting with you while we did this. We'll we'll do it again with another test. I think we'll change the configuration a bit. Yeah, and definitely let us know what you thought. And obviously, we'll be in the Discord chat right after this. So, all right, OBS. Oh, let me slam that switch down. Oh dear. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let me see if we can... Okay, here it is. It's attached to the katana. Uh, okay, pulling the lever. Bye, folks.